Hey, I'm Nick and I help coach people to improve their productivity and discipline and reach their dream lifestyles. And today I want to put together a whole video dedicated to be the all in one for being productive. So if you really listen and understand what I'm saying today, then you really start finding results quickly. So how do you be productive? Well, it's tricky because it's different for everyone. To be productive is to get good results and get good investment out of your time. It's to be able to sit down and work and get a lot of things done all at once and not being lazy and putting things off. And what I mean by it's different for everyone is because not everyone has the same job and the same ideals. What can be productive for one person can be a waste of time for the other. But if you're just starting out like I was, it can be difficult and hard to understand where to start. Personally, when I wanted to stop being lazy and start doing things with my day, I turned out just doing a heap of chores around the house, telling myself that I was being productive and getting housework done, but by the end of the day, I hadn't really done anything because sure, that can be productive for some people to get off their bed and start cleaning around and making the house look more presentable. But if you're more concerned with leveling up a skill and doing some work on a specific task, then cleaning a house doesn't really sound productive. So to find your way of being productive depends on your goal. You need to sit down by yourself without distractions, without your phone on or your laptop going and actually think through what your purpose is going to be and how you're going to work towards that, which may seem pretty big in scope. It's kind of hard to go from, I don't want to be lazy anymore to what am I going to do with my life? But the fact is that without a goal and a purpose, then there's no reason to be productive. You really need a why in order to get a start with any of this. So think back to all your goals, all your dreams that you've had before and nail down what you want to be, what you want to have. If you want to be successful in life and not have to worry about bills and help out your family, then that's a good cause. And that, of course, requires you to get a good career. And in order to do that, you need to start investigating in what you enjoy and then start looking into how to get better at that skill or at that job. For me, it took me a while to actually nail down that software engineering and getting involved with technology is what I wanted to do because I had been experimenting with different avenues and different ways of doing other things like sales and social media and other stuff like that. But until I'd actually found that software engineering is what I wanted to do, then I started investigating how am I going to get better at that and make myself more valuable in that career and in that skill. And then you look at courses and stuff like that. So that is your next step find what you want to do and find how you can get better at it. With courses, I personally love Udemy. It's got a bunch of stuff and you can just subscribe to it and get access to the best of the best courses. And there's also books to supplement your knowledge and to study with. So if you've made it this far and you've been following everything that I've been saying, then that's the hardest part. Once we've found this goal and the way that we're going to attack the goal, that is where we can actually start developing our skills to actually be quote unquote productive. But if you've had any experience with trying to work hard at something, then you'd know that it's hard to do and it's hard to always have that drive in you to push past barriers. This is because of something that I've mentioned before in lots of videos that your conscious brain is the one that has those hopes and dreams and those ideas and plans to how you're going to get to leveling up your skill and how you're going to get to advancing your career. But your subconscious mind is lazy. It's only concerned with food and water. And like most people, you already have those desires fulfilled. And so the next thing is that it just wants to have fun and be social. But the thing is with success, with leveling up your career, with being skillful, it isn't always relatively fun, which is where the second half of this video is going to come in. In order to be productive, you need to do the hard work when you don't feel like it. In order to do that, you need to have discipline. Now, you've probably heard that been 
thrown around everywhere from people running marathons to people studying for eight hour blocks at a time and doing all these crazy things and you might be thinking how am I meant to be disciplined in a similar way to being productive being disciplined is relative to the person and their goals for one person they might have to be disciplined in order to study while the other might have to be disciplined in exercising but for the rest of a group of people they might just find that natural discipline is relative to you and what you find hard especially when the difficulty revolves around your goal that is where you need to level up your mind and be able to tackle any obstacle no matter how hard it is so first off don't get caught up in what other people are doing just because I like doing a lot of exercise and long distance running doesn't mean that you have to do that in order to progress in your career. Find out what you need to do and the hard part of that and then figure out some systems in order to build your discipline. Because unlike what you may see online, discipline doesn't come all at once. It starts from baby steps. The person who is studying eight hours a night and doing all-nighters and getting A plus and all that didn't always start that way. They had a similar start to you. They just prioritized and strategized how to level themselves up. I didn't start by running half marathons. I started by running just four kilometers around my block. It's different for everyone. Your job is to figure out how it's different for you and what you need to focus on. If you struggle with learning new things and memorization, then learn how to take notes properly and how to learn to learn. And if you're struggling with exercise, then research some beginner workouts and figure out how your body functions. But with anything, it starts small. You start small and then you build it up one by one using habits, which is probably another buzzword that you've heard a lot with good habits and bad habits. Generally speaking, we want to build our good habits and break down and diminish our bad habits. We want to consistently be pushing for a better and better day and getting just a little bit more stuff done and getting our brain used to that feeling and making it a habit to feel that way and work that way. Now, for most people, it probably is pretty simple to start incorporating some better habits and it's most likely easy to understand where your improvements need to come from and how you can work towards your goal. But one of the biggest things that is also super duper important is actually taking out those bad habits. It's like a weight that is going to drag you behind and stop you from moving forward. You need to take out those bad habits in order to improve yourself, not just layer on top a bunch of good habits. So what am I talking about with bad habits? These are the things like sleeping in, using your phone, watching TV, the stuff that may sound pretty hardcore to you, but the more you learn about good habits and being productive and being disciplined, the harder your mind will become and the more you'll recognize the time wasters and be able to shoot them down. But if you're just starting, Believe me when I say your phone, your TV, and especially sleeping in and wasting time running on your bed is going to be the biggest time wasters. And so like building up a good habit, breaking down a bad habit starts with small steps, maybe sleeping in a little less, going on your phone a little less until you've gotten rid of it from your day. So all this is probably really motivating. It's definitely the easiest part to watch videos on how to be productive and get yourself motivated but it's also important to remember that this is going to be hard there's no other way around it now the more you tell yourself that more subconsciously you're gonna make it so not so much be obsessed with it's going to be hard but be happy with the challenge and be proud of yourself through every step along your journey to be productive but understand that your brain is wired a certain way for some people that's beneficial for others who may be used to being lazy and all those time wasting behaviors cutting out that behavior is hard to do and rewiring your brain is hard to do but with little steps and little improvements you'll slowly get better at it but that's all i've got for today and if you follow 
all of that to the T, then you'll definitely start being productive and leveling up your discipline and getting rid of bad habits. But as the last thing I want to leave you off with is a tip that I've found very useful and it's to actually have a habit tracker to be able to track all the good stuff you've been doing and be able to track how much time that you're spending away from your phone and having what I call a negative habit. When you track how many times you don't do something, that's just as beneficial as tracking how many times you do something. It's something that's going to help you reflect and be inspired every day that you wake up, being ready for the next challenge and the next thing that you're going to tick off your list. But like I keep saying, start small, don't burn yourself out, and you've definitely got this if you listen and follow through. If you're still interested or are struggling with any productivity or discipline hacks, I have started one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is free and just a way for me to help you. You can book a call for that in the description below. But until then, I'll see you later.